Namaste. The Bill of Rights in the American Constitution guarantees the citizens the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It doesn't say, you know, if you're ever going to get happiness, <laughs> but you can pursue it all you want. So, what is this pursuit of happiness? And now, does it work? And does it work? Is it successful or not? Well, first of all, what is happiness? Is happiness getting what you want? Is happiness the attainment of some higher position or status in life, some designation, some title? Or is happiness uh, giving something wonderful to others? What is happiness exactly? Is it a possession or is it a state or what is it? So actually the Buddha defined happiness very nicely. Sabe sata bhavantu sukkitarta. That means always and in everything to become a happy soul. This is a wonderful definition of happiness. And I think it's the only one that I can really get behind 100%. And why is that? Well, let's look at the means of attaining happiness. First of all, most people think that attaining happiness involves creating some kind of material conditions like wealth, fame, beauty, strength, knowledge, or renunciation, or you know, some kind of combination of material qualities. And of course, the problem with this is that usually we don't have those qualities. <laughs> So we have to work to attain them, and that is a lot of work. And the other thing is, even if we attain these qualities, they're only temporary. And they're imperfect. There's always some flaw, some unsatisfactoriness. And these are the three qualities of the material world as observed by the Buddha. One, it's impermanent. Two, it's unsatisfactory. Three, it's not self. Remember, he defined happiness as sukhitata, being happy and joyful in your soul. So that means it's permanent. It's permanent because the soul is permanent, the atma consciousness. So any material happiness that's based on external conditions is not going to do that. It can. Because if it's material, it's temporary, it's not satisfactory, and it's not self. It's not the soul. It's not the atma, the consciousness within. But we see over thousands of years of human history, people trying again and again to bring happiness by changing material conditions. Isn't it? I mean, politics, economics, philosophy, religion, even war has been sold as a means of attaining happiness. And has it brought happiness to the world? Look, the world is still as miserable as it was 
thousands of years ago, if not more so. We have less freedom, less autonomy, less security, less stability. Huh? And yet people are thinking, oh, we're advancing. <laughs> well, maybe we're advancing in technology, but in every other aspect of human life, human values, we seem to be regressing. So anyway, changing the material situation is not going to bring us lasting happiness. It can't, because all these changes are just temporary. And they have the tendency to revert to the mean. What does that mean? In other words, if something has an average value or an average state, that even if we push it into another state, it is bound to return to the original state. For example, right now we're mining from the earth all these fossil fuels, coal and oil especially, and using them to power a, a tremendous explosion of industry and production and uh, energy usage of all different kinds. It can't last. It can. We're running out of fossil fuels. The easy fruit, huh? the low-hanging fruit, the easy to extract minerals and oil and so on has already been used. And now it becomes harder and harder to find the stocks in the natural world that will fuel further expansion of our industrial and economic base. We cannot continue to go on like this without harming the planet and ultimately harming ourselves. This is like environmentalism 101, ecology 101. There are limits to growth and we have reached or surpassed them. So this is going to have to revert to the mean, the energy usage is going to revert to the mean. That means even if we get all this wind and solar and tidal energy and geothermal and whatever, we're still going to have to reduce our energy footprint, our energy usage. So if you're thinking, oh, I can just uh, keep enlarging my AI servers <laughs> indefinitely and we'll get smarter and smarter computers, no. Who's going to give you the energy? I think people would rather be warm and fed and have clean water and like that than your, have your AI computer toy tell them what to think. Anyway, another means of attaining happiness is sense gratification. And this is, of course, a subcategory of arranging some material situation. But it deserves its own category because uh, it's such a dream and such a false idea that if I can just get enough sense gratification, then I'll be happy. And of course, the problem with that is you can never get enough. As soon as you get some, you want more. As soon as you get more, you want more. <laughs> and it never ends. Unless you voluntarily put limits on your sense gratification, it will eat up all your time and energy and intelligence and wealth and so on. Look at the people who get addicted to various substances, alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever. Fame, you know, it's a terrible drug. It's addictive as anything. So when a person becomes addicted like this, basically they're hopeless until they hit bottom. You just have to let them go. But this is the proof. It's not a sustainable way of attaining happiness. Now, another better way of attaining happiness is through religion. To earn 
a better birth in the next life. According to scriptural teachings, this universe is made up of many levels, many lokas, many different planetary systems. And they vary in quality from hellish to the earthly to heavenly to beyond heavenly spiritual planets and like that. So by means of various religious and spiritual pro processes, exercises, sacrifices, and so on, we can attain these planets in the next life. This was the first teaching I encountered from my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada. It was a little booklet called Easy Journey to Other Planets. And basically the thesis is that by generating many, many impressions of life as it is on the higher planetary system, one can go there in the next birth by means of a yogic process. Well, that's all well and good. But what if people don't have a religious faith? Or what if they don't know the proper yogic procedures? Or what if, for whatever reason, they're unable to perform them? Well, they're just out of luck, aren't they? <laughs> but there's another way, a still higher way, through meditation. By meditation, we quiet the ego, quiet the mind, and we disidentify the ego with the body, the mind, possessions, the outside world, various labels and designations, positions, and so on. So these different ego roles that we are identified with are the things that get us in trouble because they're the ones that make us think we have to have this and we have to have that. We have to do something or other to be happy. But if we clear the mind of all thoughts by meditation, we find out something very amazing. The mind is happy when it's still. And this is what Buddha was talking about when he said, Bhavantu Sukitata, you should become a person of joyous soul. And that is our natural state. <clears throat> but it's covered over now by so much agitation due to striving to rearrange the material world, <laughs> which is basically fruitless, hopeless, unsustainable. And then there's one more way of attaining happiness, which is the best of all. And that is to realize I am consciousness. Or even beyond that, I am pure, unconditioned awareness. Unconditioned means there is no objects, just like a mirror. If there's nothing reflected in a mirror, the mirror has no qualities. But if you put something, let's say, red colored in front of the mirror, it'll reflect red. If you put something blue, then it turns blue. This is conditioning. So in the same way, our current consciousness is full of all kinds of conditioning due to different objects that it's fastened onto. But if we remove all those objects and turn the consciousness around so that its own object is itself, we discover something very interesting, which is pure, unconditional happiness and bliss. This is called Satchidananda, unlimited existence, consciousness, and bliss. And this is the real happiness. This is the real Sukhitatta, because by means of this kind of happiness, one can be happy forever. And no external conditions can affect it or shake it or disturb it in any way. So this is the happiness that is attainable through Noli. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>